I'm Genevieve Gorder, in for Sarah Gore, and this is Open House. Today we're looking at how the experts live. We're going inside the homes of interior designers. Keith Baltimore shows us his hip take on traditional design. Interior designer, TV personality, and my good friend Vern Yip shares his timeless style at home. But first, Sasha Baikoff gives us a look at her whimsical lib workspace. Leopard pattern side tables flank the bed. They add a provocative, edgy aspect to the more classical elements. You gotta be a little provocative in the bedroom, am I right? Hey everybody, I'm Genevieve Gorder filling in for the lovely Sarah Gore while she's out on maternity leave. I am thrilled to be a part of Open House, and as you may know, my love for interior design runs deep. Whether it's been on Trading Spaces, HGTV Design Star, Dear Genevieve, or one of the bigger challenges of my career, revamping my own home like four blocks away from here on Genevieve's renovation. Over the years, I've had the pleasure of sharing my design inspiration and passion for all things home with all of you. And today, I get to continue that journey on Open House. I'm taking you inside some pretty amazing spaces, starting with this one. It's a spectacular architectural and interior design jewel over Manhattan's famed elevated park, the High Line, right out there. This building was designed by world-renowned architect Zaha Hadid, and she was one of the most visionary architects of our time. Her buildings have been commissioned around the world. Here on 28th Street, this futuristic condo was one of Hadid's last projects before she passed away last year, and it most certainly will remain a symbol of her legacy. The exterior showcases Hadid's signature use of curves. The building's metal facade is driven by one continuous line, and inside, no less spectacular. The furniture collection and accessories were thoughtfully selected to fit in with the sculpted nature of the space. Everything in this four-bedroom condo comes together seamlessly to create a unique work of art. Now let's kick things off with interior designer Sasha Baikoff at her live-work duplex in Greenwich Village. Sasha designed her place to inspire her at every turn, embracing a truly maximalist aesthetic. It's wild, whimsical, a one-of-a-kind home to both entertain in and take that client call. Take a look. Hi, I'm interior designer Sasha Baikoff, and welcome to my live work duplex in Greenwich Village. I wanted this to be above all a creative living space. One that inspires me as much when I'm getting down to work as it does when I'm entertaining. Let's take a look. The entry establishes a lavish and playful tone that I wanted throughout my home. I installed this butterfly wallpaper inside the original molding of the closet doors. It really makes you feel like you're stepping into a fairy tale. In the dining area, I chose a Lucite French Space Age table. I love this hole in the middle that can accommodate any decorative element, including these beautiful pink roses. This vintage Hollywood sign always inspires and brings to mind the timeless glamour of Tinseltown's golden age. And I can't not talk about this Italian carousel pony. It was a flea market find, and as soon as I saw it, I knew I had to have it. And now the living room. The furniture is a mix of mid-century pieces in various luxury fabrics all orbiting this checkerboard Vladimir Kagan table. Nature was my guiding design principle here, and the colors definitely reflect that. It helps that the backdrop is that most rarefied New York amenity, the garden, my own enchanted oasis. And speaking of an oasis, follow me upstairs to the bedroom. I wanted this room to be reminiscent of a grand French hotel suite. It's got incredibly high ceilings, so it feels vast. I use this high back headboard to give this blank wall a sense of drama. Leopard pattern side tables flank the bed. They add a provocative, edgy aspect to the more classical elements. You gotta be a little provocative in the bedroom, am I right? 
If you have the space, it's always nice to have a vanity in your room. This one combines gilt wood and Venetian antique mirror. Sitting in front of it always transports me to Paris in the 1880s. Now the closet is a real luxury, I admit it. I painted it French blue and used the same Venetian mirror on the dresser. Everything is on display like an object of art. Shoes, bags, perfumes, you name it. On a practical level though, it keeps me organized and neat. I wanted my home to transport you as you walk through it. From the glamour of Hollywood in the 1930s to Palm Beach in the 80s. Mid-century modern, all the way to the future. All with the whimsy of a fairy tale. I hope seeing this space inspires something new for you, as it does for me every day. Thanks for coming by. It's always great to have that one conversation piece. And the carousel pony certainly does the trick. I also have a carousel pony, coincidentally, hanging in my dining room. Good work, Sasha. Stick around because up next on Open House, Keith Baltimore shows us how a small space can have big design ideas. Your first impression is that you're in the kitchen, but it also had to serve as my foyer, bar, and here's a little secret, my closets. We'll be right back. Open House is sponsored in part by Coldwell Banker, the real estate company with real advantages. Find your home today at coldwellbanker.com. Welcome back to Open House. Now we're meeting up with friend to the show, Keith Baltimore. You'll be struck by how he reinvented an old New York apartment to accommodate his lifestyle as an NYC single professional. His ingenious design takes advantage of every inch of this 974 square foot space. Hi, I'm Keith Baltimore. Welcome to my home on Park Avenue South. You've seen a lot of my work on Open House, but this is the first time I'm showing my home on camera. I often refer to myself as an anthropologist of design, where I take people's wants and needs and make it happen for them. Now I have to do this for myself, not an easy task. So this apartment is as much design as self-exploration, and I found myself in this apartment. My apartment's about a thousand square feet, much smaller than most of the places that I designed, so I had to make every inch count. Every space had to carry more than its own weight and be multi-purpose, and it happens as soon as you walk in the front door. Your first impression is that you're in the kitchen, but it also had to serve as my foyer, bar, and here's a little secret, my closets. The design of my kitchen actually started with my antique Baccarat box collection. As I said, this was a journey of self-discovery and I realized that I truly love these boxes. So I had custom cabinets built to display them. They were also the impetus for the brass hardware and the crystal-like quality of the room. You've heard people call a room a jewel box. My kitchen's a Baccarat box. Speaking of glitter storage, behind these antique doors are my clothes. Yes, my clothes are in the kitchen, but designing a small space demands some creativity, and I knew my client would like it. One of the most important features of the construction was that I was able to see outside and get the light into the apartment. Opening the walls had a dual purpose. Not only did it let natural light in, it also draws you into the living room. So I started with black and white because I want to be able to change my home as I do. I'm surrounded by inspiration every day, so I'm constantly evolving. That black and white palette allows me to romance that idea. Right now I'm feeling black, white, brass accents, and bright colors. Maximizing space became an obsession with me. The chaise and the sofa become a guest bedroom, the desk becomes a dining room table, the coffee table is used as a bookcase, and I've incorporated hidden storage everywhere, like the window seats along the wall. This may be a small space, but it's big design. I've used every single inch of it. Same thing goes for the bedroom. It's not very large, feels spacious, because I've strategically designed to utilize every square inch. The bed is mindfully placed at just the right spot, 
to have the window seat hold more storage. The headboard was a way for me to accentuate the height, but also kept me grounded since it had horizontal lines. Set upon this black flocked wallpaper, the black makes you feel like the room is wider. This room is masculine, it's chic, smart, and I love it. Thanks so much for joining me in my home. I'm so glad I was able to take you on my own personal design journey. Hope to see you soon. That's a great example of how you can carry a color theme throughout the entire home without feeling tired or overdone. There's so much more to come. Next on Open House, I'm catching up with a very old friend, Vern Yip. We're back in a moment. Welcome back to Open House. I'm Genevieve Gorder, in for Sarah Gore. Now we're with interior designer Vern Yip. For years, we worked together on TLC's Trading Spaces, HGTV's Design Star. We caught up with Vern at his Manhattan home to learn a few tips about how patterns can lead to perfection. Hi, I'm Vern Yip, interior designer and author of Vern Yip's Design Wise, your smart guide to a beautiful home. Welcome to my Manhattan Pied-a-Terre. This place is less than 800 square feet and it's designed to be incredibly functional and of course to take advantage of the beautiful Central Park views. Now my number one rule in interior design is to make your home a physical manifestation of you so that every time you walk through that front door you feel like you're the most comfortable here more so than any other space. Now one of the best tools for employing that is layering. Let me show you how I've done that in my own home. As you can see here, I've layered a couple of different ways. One of the most important ways that you can layer is by using pattern. You can see that I've employed it on almost every surface in the home. From the floor that has an embedded stripe, to the chairs, the upholstery, the throw pillows, I've got pattern throughout this entire space. But I've made sure that they're all playing together within the same color palette. This helps it really feel pulled together. Now, I decided to forego a traditional coffee table for these three custom leather upholstered cubes. In New York, space is a premium. Everything has to be multifunctional. So these leather cubes house everything from my guest bedding to my kids' toys, and they can be pulled apart and slid to the dining room table for extra seating. Layering in this dining space also makes it feel like my home. You can see that the different patterns are layered here and then it works with the artwork. None of it matches, but it's all tied together with the same color palette. Now, one of the biggest problems that I see when I walk into somebody's space are underscaled light fixtures. You wanna make sure that there are larger, more impressive fixtures. Making sure that you have a properly scaled fixture gives you some drama, it gives you something interesting to look at and also gives you a lot more illumination. Here in the bedroom, the big star is still the incredible Central Park view. It's the best start to my day to wake up to that every morning. Now your bed is the biggest piece of real estate in your entire home, so you want to make sure that it makes a statement and reflects you. By picking patterns that put a smile on my face, I've made this bed the most welcoming for me. When it comes to your bedroom, remember, you spend a third of your life in this space, so make it optimally reflective of you. Ignore the trends and pick what really makes you happy. I'm so glad that you came by, and I really hope that you enjoyed taking a look at my home. But most importantly, I hope you picked up a lot of tips to go out and make your home a physical manifestation of you. Fern, as your former design star co-judge, I would pass you on to the next level. Well done. Next up, minimalist design to the max with Tui Pranich. Be right back. Welcome back. Now we join acclaimed designer Tui Pranich at his unique downtown loft apartment. 
Now this custom home is located in a former bank building and features many of the original details, which Tui incorporated into his design, including those soaring arched windows. He wanted a home that felt minimal and effortless, and he certainly achieved that. It's a two-bedroom, two-bath manifestation of his aesthetic. Hi, I'm Tui Pranich. I'm a designer based in Miami and New York. Welcome to my loft in Chelsea. Well, this has been my home for 12 years, and the reason I picked this particular building is because of architecture. It is actually built in 1907 for the Bank of New York. It was converted in 1999 to 12 condominiums. I have an architect background, so I came in and I fell in love with the space. So as you come into the space, the first thing you see when you turn to the right is this beautiful wrought iron two-story high window, which gives you a lot of light. Problem about this space is long and narrow. So by creating different texture, it helps accentuate the apartment and make it a little more interesting. Well, you know, I love to entertain. That's one of my big things. And one idea about this apartment is to make everything from the first floor open space. The kitchen is open to the dining room, the dining room is open to the living room. By doing that, it makes the apartment look bigger and it's also easy flow. Most important thing about the living room is to create the kind of space that's comfortable. So I created a sectional, which is B&B Italian. You can lounge on, you can light on, and it's very inviting. I accent it with a few pieces. For instance, the coffee table is done by Dakota Jackson, who is a famous American designer. And also the lounge chair done in the cowhide skin instead of using the regular fabric. By putting the living room in the back, you get a little more privacy and also, also a little more quiet. This apartment happened to have a little garden in the back. So you'll be able to look out into the garden instead of looking down to the street. I place a dining area toward the front next to the kitchen so that you can use the counter in the kitchen as the buffet or as the bar. Now, one of the most important things, furniture pieces in this whole apartment is a custom dining table. It's number three out of 12, designed by a famous Italian designer, the Opera di Gioni. It's made out of wood and painted a white iron base. The designer created a glass so you can kind of look through and see the whole design of the base. I want to design a kitchen like a large piece of furniture that would blend in with the rest of the apartment. So everything is all built in. The wood are all bamboo wood, the same wood that I use throughout the whole apartment. We use concrete countertop to blend it in with the flooring. It's very inviting and it's also a very cozy space. There's two bedrooms in this home. One is behind a flush door, which you don't even notice it from the living room. And the other is upstairs, which is a master bedroom suite. I designed it so there's open space and every area blend in together. This home has been such a special place for me in New York City. I hope you enjoy visiting it with me today. Thank you. Such a cool space and he really made it one of a kind. Stick around. Up next, what does it take to be a young agent in the high stakes real estate world? Find out after the break. You're watching Open House. It takes time to earn your stripes in real estate. It takes experience, connections, and talent. And right now, we're taking a moment to recognize a talented professional who has mastered all three of those skills and more. He is part of a community of young real estate professionals under 30 who recognize the real estate game isn't just about buying and selling, it's about people and building communities. Hi, I'm Joe Piccinini with Colville Banker. I sell real estate in the Hamptons, and there's no better place to do so than here. You've got great people, great beaches, and great houses. I didn't choose real estate, real estate chose me. I was working at a deli in college. There was a guy who came in every day and bought sandwiches. And then he said, what are you doing after college? I said, I have no idea. And then he said, come join us. So I was lucky enough to have a, a broker who had absolute confidence in me and said, hey man, you can do this. You can sell houses here. 
And that's all I needed. I dove right in head first. I started door knocking, started making cold calls. I did whatever I could to meet as many people as possible. What it takes to be a good real estate agent. This, you've got to listen, number one. Then, you've got to be yourself. People trust you when you're being yourself. And, and this is a business all about trust. You're not going to sell anything if nobody trusts you. The thing I like most about real estate is becoming involved in people's lives and helping them transition into the next very important stage in their life. Coldwell Banker is a great place to work as a young agent because they take mentorship very seriously. They want to give their agents all the tools necessary to be successful. And it gives me all the support I need in the hyper-competitive market of the Hamptons. When you hear the name Coldwell Banker, you hear trust. And that's something I take very seriously when I deal with my clients. Advice I'd give to a young agent trying to get into the business is just do it. Trust yourself and do it and be yourself. I've only been doing this for three years, so being recognized at 25 for Coldwell Bankers 30 Under 30 it makes me feel great, and I can't wait to see what the future holds. To find out if a career in real estate is right for you, visit coldwellbanker.com. And that's a wrap for today. It was such a pleasure filling in for Sarah Gore this week. For inspiration on design and more, be sure to check out my website, GenevieveGorder.com and there you can find out about all my new collections for your home which include everything from rugs to wallpaper to fabric etc. And if you want to check out any of the homes featured on today's show just visit OpenHouseTV.com. Thank you so much for watching.